Okay, this isn't going to be what we're starting with, but I have set up. Whoa, maybe I should put a link in. Uh, a link to the uh, should be a mutually editable homeroom advisement seating chart. Uh, this is a floating class that is at slightly different times each day or it's a couple different times depending on which day of the week it is doesn't matter it's always happening it's not exactly homeroom nothing's being taught in it it's a group class it has a slight mix of grades in it so while there are mostly people in your sophomore class in there there's a going to be a couple of freshmen there's going to be a couple of upperclassmen scattered around as peer mentors uh the only thing I really care about right now is if that's a five by five grid, and really it should be a, uh, disregard row five, it should be a, f a four by five grid, so disregard the whole five. Uh, my question to pose to you is, in which cell are you sitting? You should put your, your name in whatever spot, whatever desk you're taking up. You can put it in there, Dave. You don't have to tell me, you just have to put it in there. I can put it in there. It should oh, be editable. Oh, I can open the original. Ah, so does. No, oh, it's still a picture. Open original. It what should be a things? link. Yeah, if you just say open original, then I got it. it. Oops. Okay. okay. I'm not. Because I'm 4D. I was what I was putting down. No, you weren't. I already wrote it in the he Discord. Actually, so you he actually was. did. But it, I'm only getting it up as a picture. What am I doing wrong? Well, that is very weird. I don't know why that would be. original. Um, this link goes to here, 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 here. Do you sure you want to go here? Yep. And I end with just a picture. Oh, but if you click the link above, though, that gets you in. Click the link. Where the link is? Oh, where it actually has the link to the chart above? Yeah. Yes. You mean that link? Yeah. So click on the actual picture, or you'll get a picture. So, okay, so we're four by four. Four by four? Four by five. Correct. Should be four by, yeah, four by five. Five deep, four wide. Oh. I like how literally nobody wants to be up front. That's just great. Oh, actually, my time has come. <laughs> yes? Mike, I hope you're capturing this as you're typing in here, because I, want, I oh. want the video oh. to capture oh. this. Oh no, you're getting this. So what I will be doing with this as a homeroom exercise later, we're we'll probably do it offline, um, is I'm gonna start, and, and uh, somebody, who, who put in, somebody put in a link to a classmate generator. Love oh, that's me. That's Bill, of course. That's great. I mean, there's a couple of people I wanna get in here, like No-No and Hot Mess. Um, no, not that link. Uh, no, no, and hot mess and stuff, but otherwise I want to kind of have people, I'm going to, what I'm going to do, and I, I've got the general structure in mind is I'm going to ask someone for like, who's sitting just to the left of Alex. You and don't want to sit next Alex. to me now? <laughs> You guys are terrible. But I will, for instance, say to Dave, who's sitting just to the left of Alex and get a name or a superhero name or something. And then I will ask Bill, for example, why does this person annoy you? Or, you know, just something, some kind of some kind of provocative question that we can get some information about. Who is this so, problem so, child? Well, so, so, so Kiln, you want to sit next to Joe or you don't want to sit next to me? It was more I had gone into the one row to spread out from sync and stuff just to be generally spread out. But uh, hold up, isn't sync the one who decided that school and stuff isn't relevant? Relevant? This is what, his moment. Why, why do you think they make me sit at the front? Next to problem child. I am the problem child. Who is problem child? <laughs> Sink. <laughs> Honestly, problem child is the name of one of uh, one of my minions in City of Villains uh, for my mastermind. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so we will go around and essentially what I want is somebody ge to generate a name or a character into a space and two different people to answer different questions about that person. So we have a nice rich tapestry of people. We're not going to do that right now. This is just a starting place um, for the thing. So once again, our sort of meandering beginning to this um, brought on by technical difficulties and random stuff. I'm stuck on push to talk because of the echo. It's great. Dice, have you ever thought about uh, technical difficulties and random mess being like a good name for a blog? Or I mean, yes, it would be. I already have, I mean, I have a couple of names I'm really quite fond of. Although I have to hand it to my coworker who, just, who, who pointed out to me that I was overlooking a massive, I was making a massive oversight by not having a blog named Doistopian Wasteland. 
which is why my Tumblr is named that now, because he's right. It's silly not to have that, really. Okay, so I'm okay. I'm gonna give me just one second. I need to do a little tap, tappy tap on a keyboard here, and then I will have all of my little starter bits here. Um, do bold face your own names because it'll be easier to pick or even color code them or whatever. But uh, that'll be easier to kind of pick them out for me later. But I will be populating this. I'd like this to be kind of a thing. Uh, Mike, I have a very before I go in and type in my keyboard. I have a very important, critically important question I need to pass on. Were you? serious when you said that the fact that you were like rescuing people while Ravage was fighting the, uh, the group of superheroes that's, that's in Kaylee's game when you shot when you said oh yeah that's canon were you serious why not I mean all that does is just make things sillier I love it so there'll be some other group of sophomores and stuff like that and things going on and, and whatever. Whether or not it's exactly the same universe, uh, uh, I, I have to tell you that you basically made at least two of the players day when you said, oh yeah, that's canon. They were just thrilled about that. Also, they want to figure out some way that we can all play in like a crossover se uh, session at some point, which would be, yeah. It, it, at, that, at this point in time, yeah, Halcyon State just becomes Arcadia and Troll Hunters mixed with Three Below and all that other kind of stuff. Anyway, give me just one minute here. I want to type down some notes that I should have been doing while I was instead uh, 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 sleeping on a deck chair out by the uh, pool. Do you want skin issues? Because that's how you get skin issues. I was in the sh I was in the shade. Okay. I was in the shade. I was just I just wanted the I didn't want the air condition. All right, that's fine. Or at least moderately not as bad. Hey, March. Hmm. I think you're Ethan. Yes, I am. <sighs> All right, everybody, make sure your background and your uh, text matches your superhero colors. Oh my God. Superhero colors? Everybody has gray. superhero colors. <laughs> gray and a slightly silvery or gray. I don't know. It's dingy a color. Is concrete an earth tone? I think by definition it has to be. Okay. I tried to match with my roll 20 color. So we're going to do, um, I'm kind of doing, we're a little bit of framing back here, back and forth here. Uh, it, hopefully in a bit of a comic book style. Um, Although the comic book style is is meant to emulate somewhat uh, the camera framing mechanisms of Ferris Bueller, uh, and what we have uh, initially is a shot not quite over the shoulder, but really from the POV of the headmaster of the school. Like from his, he's like the frame is somewhat just slightly to his left and at the door of the of his office and. You see his the door opens and we see the the wizened you know but resolute frame of our school administrator there in the doorway swinging the door and the the door opening and her standing there is the first thing you say and uh, her saying you know headmaster your your next appointment is here and his kind of reddened somewhat pointy nailed hand gesturing saying come in come in and then in parallel we see uh synchronous and joe and alex and link and met Ooh, look at me getting all the names off the top of my head right off the first shot kill him kill him, kill him. Kill him. What, did i say link yeah yeah i'm the worst okay I, damn it damn it so close so close yeah, i mean yourself. it's a it's an anagram, so screw you. Anyway. I mean, um, you weren't wrong. Yeah, so Kill, Matt, Alex, Joe. We see a frame of each of them, like, kind of stepping into the door frame. And come in, come in. I, I just had a few questions. Uh, thank you for coming in early before classes got before classes got started next week. And he's, his, his frame, his panel is always the same. Your panels are always different in, in each way. So we're just going to get little snapshots of each one of these is like, say you're coming in or, or whatever else is going. Um, there is one shot uh, specifically as you're coming in, like sort of the first one is um, Joe starting to sort of turn sideways and the uh, uh, Mrs. Schwartz like presses a button on the side of the door and it like the, the sides and top fold back and up. To like basically they expand uh, enough that you can walk in like a normal person. Uh, you'll that's discover actually that's actually perfect because that was it could be the little bit that I did which was kind of.
ducking down under the trying to get in in a school like this they've prepared for you know standard doorways that you know have basically sort of like a any of the classroom doors either have like sort of the accessory sort of the accessibility button or something to that effect or just a sensor sensor that if it's like if the mass of the person coming in is above a certain level it just the door gets bigger science yeah engineering really comic uh, science. or in some of the rooms magic but you know in some of the rooms magic absolutely uh the disconcerting thing is figuring out which room it is so th that's the only real difference as you're coming in is it so real quickly in that first panel you guys are stepping into the doorway i'm just going to kind of bop around uh and I'll, if you want well we'll get to these questions and kind of go around here real quick but uh I just really like just a, qu a quick snapshot of what your expressions or your body language says is your first visible there stepping into the door. And I'll start with Kiln. You can decide for each of you whether or not this is the first time you've seen Hellbi Hellbinder, if you're not sure about the school thing, any of that stuff, whatever that happens. And if uh, you want to pass, so I loop back to you, that's absolutely okay because I'm going to be kind of going through this pretty quick. Nah. I think I'm probably focusing on focusing on uh, kind of the stuff in the office and all around. So really looking around more than than at him, really. Yeah. So Link, uh, sorry, God damn it! I should never have noticed that. <laughs> sorry. It's my own fault. I should, I'm mad at myself more than anything else. Uh, okay, so um, Alex, your first like body language, facial expression. In uh, probably bored and wary. Like, well, we're here to see somebody in authority. They probably want to dress us down or give us trouble or say something that they think is going to be helpful and it's not going to be helpful. And there's a stock set of things that teachers have to say and they don't care how kids are. And I just have to listen to it because that's my job here. So let's just find out how bad it is. Well, that's a lot packed into the body language. I like it. Uh, Joe. Uh, this is not the first time that Joe's run into um, the headmaster. Um, and he's had a kind of a lengthy interview with him, but you know he's still kind of apprehensive about this whole situation. Um, and you know other people and here, you know that that you know, he, these people here and you know is you know is this where he's being told he's going to get kicked out of the school or is he going to break something? Is he going to break something and get kicked out of the school? Um, so kind of not quite hunched down, but definitely kind of looking nervous. Gotcha. And I got to appreciate uh, Dave, or Bill uh, putting up a picture of Alex's face. I like the hunched down thing. Um, the fact that you've had a conversation with Hellbinder before and somewhat lengthy will make this conversation feel a little bit weird. That's fine. Go with that. Uh, sync. Judgmental. So just the whole, like, you, you have bad expectations about how any of this is going to go and... Yep, just like super judgy. Like, who are you here to... Yeah, gotcha. Uh, Matt. Um, so, so, so Matt has perfected the, um, the, the, the looking like you're paying attention, but looking at a point just over somebody's shoulder as opposed to looking at them. Um, so she's she's in there. She's she's um, trying to put a good foot forward. So she's she's not scowling. You know, she has you know very calm features right now. Um, and you know, you know, immediately you know sits down in the 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 first available desk on the outside. Well, this is a this is actually the office. So there's like a couple of chairs like in front of the desk kind of thing. But if you're, if you're taking the chairs, then yeah, just like one to the side. Or, yeah. And that'll be interesting to see who picks up, uh, you know, who picks various chairs and that sort of thing as well. Um, all right. So this is this is help. Uh, thanks for coming in. Just wanted to touch base real quick before we get started. Again, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, just a few questions. Want to get that down. He pulls out like a just sort of a clipboard with like a single sheet of paper on it. Um, no, no. I mean, he's got a computer on his desk. He's got screens and that sort of thing. Obviously, the place is very high tech. He's just he's got a clipboard, a number two pencil, uh, and like one sheet of paper clipped down. Uh, your um can i get your name and uh your superhero identity if you have one at this time and we'll go to uh lost you joyce oh sorry we'll go to sync he's asking can i get your full name and uh superhero identity if you have one uh yeah well i'm roddy reynolds 
Or he'd probably say the like full name, just like Ro- Roderick Reynolds. And do I'm, you say that, or, do you, or you're saying you would say that, or, or he would do that? I, I feel like he would say, like he would say the full name because it's like, like I said, he's kind of a little bit judgmental of the headmaster here because a school, b you know, formally evil right. dude. Roderick is uh, is that the name you prefer, or is there abbreviations, nicknames, anything that you prefer? Roderick's fine. All right, Roderick. And uh, your superhero name, if you have it? Yeah, it's uh, Sync. Sync. Is that short for anything? Just Sync. It's short for synchronous. Ah, I was going to spell that wrong. Thank you. Uh, Cutting to a slightly different scene, Sync. When you wake up for the first day of school, where do you wake up? And uh, to preface this, in case you guys uh, need to know, if you need it there, if you if you think that works for your background, there are absolutely um, sort of dorms on campus for full-time boarding at the campus. There doesn't have to be. You can certainly come in. Uh, the school's on an island, so there's a ferry across from town, uh, from the city. You can get in under your own power literally, uh, however you see fit. Uh, there isn't a lot of busing, but arrangements can be made, um, or you can be rooming on the island. So, sink. Uh, first day of school, where do you wake up? Uh, it is in a bedroom, and I feel like this is one of those panels where it's like him sleeping, and then all of a sudden he wakes up, and you kind of get like this, you know, because like in the next panel you'll see, hear like the beeping, or you'll see like the beeping sound effects, and you'll think that, oh, synchronous, he woke up before the alarm went off. No, he went off, he woke up before the other people in the house's alarms went off, so that he is like already getting like, got his bag over his shoulder and is walking out before he has to talk to any of them. Interesting. Are you, uh, is this your place? Is this like your family's place? Uh, yeah. So this is a room you've lived in for a while. What's it look like? Um, there are like superhero posters all over the walls, but a lot of them have started to like wear, like, like you can tell, like it hasn't been used as much. Like there's probably like that, like a little veneer of dust over things. And things are starting to get a little okay. old and wa- uh, just sort of like aged. Uh, so stuff you've collected, but you haven't done anything with really recently. Uh huh. Okay. Um. Yeah, sorry, I skipped the panel here, uh, or skipped a, a block here. Your pronouns? Uh, he is. Preferred uh, pronouns? He is he and him. Ah, uh, he and him. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I'm not repeating his questions. I'm I'm just going to go to each one of you and say this. So it's basically name, superhero name. And uh, preferred pro- or name, preferred pronouns, superhero name, and then we're going to kind of go to the waking up thing a little bit with each person. Uh, Alex. Uh, Alex Shelby. Um, I, I was going to go with Commander Awesome, but they vetoed that. Uh, so uh, Gemini. Gemini. All right. For pronouns. Alex? They and them. They and them. I'm not going to have a segue thing in here, but as as he's writing all this down, we get the cut back over to your wake up and where yeah, you are. You, and you you mentioned the dorms. I'm I'm curious about one thing. Uh, does Aegis consider that like a secure place for one of their agents to hang out? Is yes, that... officially. Okay, yes. Then, okay, then Alex would have uh, a room in the dorms and probably is waking up around four in the morning. There's some beeping going off. It's one of the computer's systems here. Um, they have to attend to it. There's a download that stalled. It's like, God damn it. Um, put some coffee on, stumbles around, and just tries to make sense of life. So you're making, you're you're like sort of doing remote tech support back to some functions back in the Aegis headquarters that you're still responsible for while you're... Oh, or, is just, or, or is this or just, just your own thing? Computing. Yeah, it could be it's it. just your own thing. Okay. We'll say for now it's just your own thing until we load that up. But, it, you know, you're up earlier than you would have been because of stuff that's gotten you up. Have you been in here long? Is there much on the in the way of decorations or walls, or is it mostly you got the computers running and it's still... I'm, I'm going to say they probably brought... Um all their posters and toys and things. So it's going to look like a very, very busy, very messy playland. There's, there's figurines, there's models, there's, you know, wall scrolls, there's all kinds of things. It's a very lived in room. And so I'm cutting to another thing. Met, a uh, last name? We didn't get a last name. Is there a last name? Met? I'm sorry, Jones. Met Jones, thank you. Uh, do you have a, in your superhero identity, if you have one? <laughs> Well, well, it's a little difficult there. Um, 
uh, it doesn't really translate well. And so, unfortunately, people have been calling me, um, well, dragon skip, because it kind of sounds like the right word, but it's not. But, but you know, you know I, I, have, I don't want to change people. I have never had a problem with a name that does not sound like what the person is truly like. I completely understand. Your preferred pronoun? I'm sorry, uh, sir, I don't understand. Are you, do you prefer to be referred to as he, she, they? We have one who's decided on it. Um, ooh. Uh, um. You can always prefer to declare I, I, it as I, later. Yeah, I, I say, um, um, co, co for all. I see, all right. I will put down no preference. No, 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 co. C-O. Right, uh, I'll co. put that down. I'll write that down. Uh, and where are you waking up, Matt? First day. Um, I am. Um, I'm in. I'm in the school dorms. Um, okay. Yeah. Given the type of kids here, I'm assuming it's a uh, single, not shared. shared yeah, it's, they tend to be singles <laughs> unless there's some sort of request for. Them. Um, so generally speaking, um, Matt is up, um, you know, sort of, sort of with the birds, with the light. Um, so, uh, Matt, Matt would be, you know, awake, you know, you know, dressed, um, in a sunny corner yes. of the dorms or outside. When any when kind of, uh, waking up. Waking yeah, up. any kind of morning ritual that she's doing exercises. Well, right? Yeah. It's a lot of, um, a lot of stretching and isometrics. Okay. She also likes to get to the bathroom before all the other girls are there. So for the group, she she if she knew better, she would say that her pronouns are she and her. But for that's, now, that's not what she was raised with. So <laughs> exactly, gotcha. Um, all right, so that's that and. Kiln. Uh, just Kiln. My people don't really have last names like you do now. Oh, I see. All right. Do you have a super high identity, or have you not selected one, or do you not choose to? I don't know. I, at the moment, not really. All right. So for you, what is your, actually, yeah, what does your wake up look like just in general, real quick? Oh, and they, them pronoun. Um. They, them, Kiln, no surname, uh, no identity, no super heroic identity at this point in time. Good. Now, as you're waking up, um, so we're, I, I want you to describe what that looks like, but we're going to hear his voiceover of the next question. How did you get your powers? But then when we cut back to the office, he's actually talking to um, Sync. Um, but what are we seeing that voiceover of yours as you're waking up when he asked that question? Um, uh, Kiln is also going to be in the dorm rooms. Um, okay. Not necessarily waking up at any set time. Um, there's the dorm is, or the room kind of sparse, but there's like miscellaneous odds and ends around. Um, God. Just sort of collect, like, what kind of odds and ends? Like, like, are they, re- is there, are they, is it like them accumulating pop culture stuff that they're trying to understand or historical stuff that they're trying to understand or shiny um, rocks? Um, there's some, like, simple modern things, a little plant thing in the corner. Uh, there's going to be, uh, there's some old technology that's partially disassembled on the desk um so a mixture of old and new stuff there's gotcha yeah sword and shield kind of propped against uh the dresser nice nice um and i'm sorry i misspoke i thought you were the last person i need to ask this for so the the overlap's actually going to be with joe young um yeah. Yeah. and so we're cut to hell hell hellbinder writing in um joey moore mighty joe young he him and he t- kind of looks up and we see so as he looks up at you we see him you see joe getting ready for the morning um what does that look like and where are you at are you at the dorms are you so, at so a quill it's, thing or so you're you're looking at an alarm clock you know clicks over to we'll say seven o'clock starts okay. to beep beeps 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 huge hand smashes the uh, uh, pull back. Uh, you know, Joe's eyes snap open. Um, looks around himself, not quite sure where he is for a few moments, and then takes a deep breath, sighs. Um, he's in a dorm room. Um, you know, 
so it has that kind of institutional dorm room look um the bed is the the same model as the other beds that we've seen in the other scenes but it's it's an oversized model um since you know obviously they would obviously would sure. accommodate different different body types um there's very little stuff um in this room aside from the furniture um there's like a school issued computer on the on the desk um a few xeroxed papers uh you know of the you know welcome to phoenix academy here are the rules type kind of on a on a stack next to it um but aside from that very little that's personal um, um hmm. okay. climbs out of climbs out of bed um rubs his face wanders over to the dresser pulls open a drawer that has you know a dozen different or a dozen pair of the same uh elastic banded cargo shorts um slips slips those on um picks his phone off the charger um and then is kind of working to to put together the uh you know put together put together his a uh, backpack slash satchel um with with texts and and notebooks and stuff um kind of carefully fitting them into the uh you know into the the, the backpacks trying really hard not to uh to inadvertently break something or tear it apart i see um and while this is going on so it's a really quiet thing because he was just looking at you and we cut to him doing all this and no, not really making all the noise just him kind of moving around the room and voiced over that then is the how did you get your powers but then when we cut back to the office he's talking and looking in sync um i'm gonna so think about that for just a second that question is going to be coming i need to pause you guys for a second uh I, I just need to catch up on something here real quick and then we'll jump back in right back so sync yeah. Do you um do you shorten it to a C or a CH? Um uh, right now I'm thinking like just CH unless somebody else okay. thinks that it needs to be just uh C. I, I think CH is fine. I was about to say I wasn't even thinking of shortening it to sync until somebody else said it. I think everybody's been saying sync because nobody wants to uh, write down synchronous. Yeah. I think I started that trend. Okay. Well it's sync with a C now. With a C or C H? With a C. Okay. Link, does that end with a K or a C? Neither. Very good. <laughs> Dave, for a bit, yeah, I thought you were serious. <laughs> I mean, we're getting it from Doi, sorry. So. <laughs> yeah, but he hasn't done as much, or if any, Zelda stuff. Is... He's too busy playing Sea of Heroes. That's not quite fair. Hey, I'm up to at least 50 different alts. All right, if you guys okay, could just hang on one true. second, I just need to make a real quick phone call real quick, um, and I'll be right back. Sorry. No problem. It's problem. Uh, the madness of the current events and everything. I'd be really mm -hmm. back with you. Right, quick, someone on this phone, uh, I'm going to call them. Not thread. Which thread? Oh, really? Got it. So, at some point I actually changed my player icon. In Roll20? In yeah. Discord? In on Roll20. the boards? I don't think I'm playing Armin still. <laughs> Well, your character thing is still, um, or your personal avatar is still the one from uh, Scum and Villainy. Yeah, like I, was saying, I don't think I'm yes, playing Armin, Armin anymore. Oh, gang names. No, I always make sure in my comic book games, always have to have an old name. <laughs> Adam Amari, uh, Roddy, uh, what did I mean this one? Yeah, Ronnie Reynolds. You gotta go for those classic... Uh, uh, Illiterate Lois Lane, things. Clark Kent, yeah. Everybody important in Superman's life, uh, having it it's, uh, that starts with L and L. Lana Lang, Lex Lois Luther, Lane, Lex Luthor, Lena Luthor. Not not to be confused with the the elves who have to start everything with Val or an L, but mostly vowels. And apropos of nothing, I left a message in the masks Discord for people to take a look at if they're interested. Not right now, but like something to take a look at when you have a chance. Ah. Oh yeah, I remember this man talked. To I actually need to look and see microscope or like the stuff behind microscope. Sorry guys, I am back. Uh, had to do a quick update. That's okay. We we're uh, just taking bets on who was going to turn you in this game. Nice, nice. Probably uh, me. I, I have it on good authority that it's me, but you know. I mean, Joe is the safe bet. Uh, anybody with anger-based powers. Well, and, you know, we actually have someone who has it as part of their character that says that, that I'm the one who turns evil. Mm -hmm. I mean... That's sure. why I love her. Not <laughs> like he's bitter or anything. Yeah. Nice. Huh. Uh, I'm still going to go for the long shot to kill. The long shot. I like it. Got to play that. It's all a misdirect. It's not an anagram. It's an anagram of Link to make people think that, but it's actually Ganon. Anyway. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, so we're going to be coming home four days early um, because everything in our little Mask of the Red Death, rich white people bunker is closing uh, mm -hmm. on Wednesday. Yeah. So that's what I figured. Yeah, I mean, it's I was I was kind of angling for coming home early anyway, and uh, at this point in time, we just, we just we would rather be home. So we're going to be home pretty quick. Uh, anyway, okay, so oh, man, this week is just taking a shot out of me and probably a bunch of other people. And at least I, I feel like an ass saying that considering that, that Bill's been um, safe distancing for 10 days longer than the rest of us. Anyway. I mine was more elastic. Now that it sounds... Yeah. And I remember that in, in 1999, you know, our house was nominated as the best site. Hang out in case the fall of civilization. Yeah, it was, yeah, and probably still true. I mean, the stash of food, if nothing else, is right out there. And Kaylee just sent me a drawing she did in her notebook of a space whale. So nice. she's pretty much their vacation plans involved um, social isolation. So um, nothing to worry about there. All right. Um, how did you get your powers? He's looking across the desk at Sam. Yep, and uh, Stank, Sank is just going to start rattling off uh, in the TV show. He's going to have a very particular cadence to his about uh, you know the the you know the theorized mutation of uh, uh, the human genome called the met you know dubbed the metagene. Uh, you know, and he'll just go on about these things and just sort of like uh, give this little spiel about you know how it. Uh, Asserts itself in random ways, sometimes more obvious than others, you know, such as somebody who were to pick up pyrokinetics, and then there may be a different metagene where one person just can eat whatever they want and never gains weight. And then I can just um, imagine Hellbender just being like, you know, you sound like Professor So-and-so, and then, you know, Sink will, he's right. rat yeah, Sink will rattle off his, like, that was from his, uh, 2013 conference. So while you're rattling that stuff off, what we see, d describe what we see as Sink is sort of navigating through the through the, through the the streets of the city and stuff that sort of demonstrates that perfect timing thing that, I mean, while his thing is somewhat like, oh, it's just this, it's just random, it's just whatever, is, are they even count as powers? What do we see Sink doing that is just too much to do? Like, it's not, you're not flying, but it's too much to discount. Yeah. It so yeah. what is what he is just like weaving through crowds like preternaturally almost uh just kind of like you know stops and watches uh uh people as they're going by and then just like instantly just shifts into cadence with them so that he can follow along with them to make his way through a crowd it is definitely very subtle i like it okay but yeah it would be one of those like big like one of those big one page spreads where you're seeing like this big crowd shot and there'll be like the little inserts where along the way you'll see like you know how sync is just like you know moving along with the crowd and seeing oh and right about like right towards the end of the thing um we see sync get like a text message Message. And he he doesn't it doesn't take him out of his rhythm, but it, it, he pull kind of pulls off to the side to take a look at it because he glances at his watch and then pulls out his phone. Or or, or is, are you not like like what level of tech are you? Where if you are you checking on the run on the jog on the walk? Are you glancing and going this requires more attention? So I pull off to the side. Like what what uh, what's that? Oh, I think like a, a minute, like like in a panel or two beforehand, it's like you see somebody like do like this really fancy like pick their phone out of their pocket sort of thing where it's like they talk like they they grab like just the barest bit of it you know uh flip it out of their pocket and then grab it to glance at it and then like once a uh, uh sinks uh pockets doing the or once a uh, uh sinks phone is ringing he does the exact same move and kind of like looks at his like you know after he does it it's just like that is cool. shakes his head and is like that's eh, too flashy yeah <laughs> I like it. So he's peering at that, and he's reading a message there that is, you know, you get the little co comic book like thing that's that's inexplicably in courier text just to indicate that it's a text, I guess. Um, uh, uh, Phoenix Academy students, please be advised that the ferry to the island, the the second, the first and second running of the ferry to the island this morning has been interminably delayed. Please seek alternate transportation to the island. Again, transportation plans B or C are indicated data you know uh, uh do not uh use the ferry for transportation the ferry is delayed and uh, then on top of that like then at the very top of the panel is still sort of that the box 
Fox and Hellbinders like text colors. Um, other than the encounter on the docks, have you had any other experience as a hero? And we cut back to the quiet of the office and he's looking at Alex. So the question to Alex is, other than the encounter on the docks, have you had any other experience as a hero? Oh, the name cut off. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. I'm sorry, yes. Yeah. Um, like, is this a question that, that that Alex must answer to Hellbinder or are we still flashing back? This is a question that Hellbinder, this is one of Hellbinder's questions. So you guys are all getting these and if eventually you want to all answer them, the question, you know, name, pronouns, how did you get your powers in this one? Other than your encounter on the docks, have you had any other experience as a hero? Um, I, I almost want to mix these together because we'll hear Alex saying, well, um, I had a pretty ordinary childhood. And then you cut to like this apartment exploding. You should absolutely. Yes. I want to know. About, I want to know about what the flashbacks are like. Like I want the absolute deadpan, like, you know, completely level eyelids, deadpan delivery of the, you know, you know, shrugs and boring life thing. And then the cuts to, or even the voiceover of all this other crazy stuff that could clearly contradicts that. So by I all totally means, show, show that to us. Narrator. Um, I, I was bitten by a radioactive raccoon and gained their proportional trash panda abilities is what I would like to say, but really it, it wasn't anything special. And then cut to like this, this, you know, half destroyed person being surgically modified with, with uh, cyborg parts. Yeah. We didn't actually, we didn't actually ask the, how did you get your power? I'm not asking it to everybody, but um, um, yeah, put that <laughs> That that just becomes the incorrect quotes thing or, or something like that. But that's that's really good. Um, but yeah, your specific one that we're getting to Alex is, you know, have you had any other experiences as a hero? And then finally, um, I, I do have I do have some strengths and uh, I figured I'd give heroism a shot. And then you cut to uh, some, you know, some troopers or or private security down the hallway and Alex is stuck in a firefight with them and it's, you know, going around the corner and, and opening fire and ducking back as, as return fire comes in. Love it. That's just, that's just great. Um, you cut out again, Doyce. Yeah, I think I'm letting go of the button on this a, a few seconds too soon. Yeah, um, let, him, yeah let yourself let talk and then, talk give it, and then give it a second and then let go. Then, right. You gotta be uh -huh, like, uh -huh. this is release. So this is Hellbinder, you know, after your answer, he's just, uh-huh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he's still writing, writing. And he writes this particular scene, he writes for a lot longer than what you said warrants. And he just keeps <laughs> going, you know, and he pauses for a second, you think he's finally done, and he flips over the paper and writes some more. And just no, no apologies, no real bio language. So it's like, sorry, this takes long. He just, he's just writing, and he's writing, and he's writing. Alex is going to look at the others apologetically and kind of shrug and no, no. I'm just and, very interesting. And I want to make it clear, and this is, I should have framed this up, but like, each one of these shots is you guys are in the office alone. And I, I, yeah, you guys are each, this is a solo interview uh -huh. where he happens to be asking exactly the same questions for each of you. So his side of the discussion, given that we only ever see him ever ask the question once, is presumed to be exactly the same for each of you. And it's what we're seeing is how it's for each of you. So when you guys are each coming into the door, you're coming in the door by yourselves. You're sitting down by yourself. You're getting each one of these questions absent anybody else watching what your answers are. So if that colors how any of you guys would have answered this, and I, I apologize for the for the confusion there, but you're, you're getting these, these questions asked, you're alone in the room, um, but we're seeing it as though you're answering it as a group, kind of. In fact, so far, none of you guys have been together yet in any of this stuff, because you're all waking up alone, you're all getting the questions answered a couple days ago, alone, all that kind of Hopefully that doesn't drastically change what any of you would have said. Nope. Okay. No. And he, so he's writing and writing and writing and writing and writing. And towards the end, you can finally seems to be winding down. He's doing that thing where you're trying to, you know, you're talking and still writing something else, but you're asking a different question. So he's like scribbling. He's like, who do you admire amongst the known heroes of the world? Scribble, scribble, scribble. Past or present. And when he looks up, we see that he's looking up at Kiln. I'm sorry, no, my bad, uh, uh, Matt. So the question to Matt is, who do you admire amongst the known heroes of the world, past or present? Um, Marjorie, you can make somebody up. You can... 
Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of sort of like a, a, a Ms. HHL. Liberty character. Some, somebody like a Ms. Liberty character. So, gold, gold, golden age, strong female superhero. Cool. I need to get a good name for it, but we can just go, ah, you know what? I feel like they're in the history for Halcyon. They actually have that as like, yeah, yeah. there's one of them. There's like a, there's a yeah. character just like yeah. that. So we'll, we'll backfill for that. Like, you know, you're, you're kind of like golden age, which says a lot about, I think sort of her in one of these. Well, but if you think about it also, that's that it's, it's those heroes that, that last longer because they're, they, they have, they're always compared back to. Right. Right. You know, it's like everybody knows Cicero because everybody said, Cicero said, you know, <laughs> okay. So, uh, Sink's been running into Flying Freedom, Maggie McIntyre. Love it. First Golden Age hero, Flying Freedom, Maggie McIntyre. I, I love the idea that Met would go to, like, not just one of the Golden Age heroes, but, like, the first hero. Yep. Like, you know, you can't get more classic than that. It's an unassailable position, honestly. The, the, there's there's nothing... Um, I, I find it unusual because that also says that it's it's not a very telling answer in some ways. Yeah, it's a safe... Like, nobody can really get after you for it. It doesn't really give much away. It's, you know... <laughs> The conspiracy theorists among us will go, is that just what you were told, been, what, what you were told to say? Like, yeah, I like that. So, um, <laughs> Dave has a good picture up there in, in Discord. Very nice. Um, what do you hope from, what do you, uh, what do you hope to gain from this? And he's not looking up. He's not, his, his pencils just moved down to the next answer blank on the paper. And he uh, is waiting for an answer from, let's say Joe. Everyone's going to get this question. So what do you hope to gain from this? Uh, good education and, uh, you know, um, meet, meet, meet some, meet some people maybe. And, and, you know, I just, I just need to, I want to help people. I want to help people and, and, you know, be a hero and and i i just seems while like we're a getting, place to learn to do that while we're getting the voiceover of you saying i want to meet people and stuff like that this is you stepping out of the hallways stepping out into the school um stepping into the morning hubbub and stuff what is making you run late um what's making me run late um i i'm reluctant to push my way through crowds um, so you're just kind of like keep letting people by, waiting for a space to open up that's big or, enough for you. Or, you know, try, it, trying to move forward. If people aren't getting out of the way, I won't, you know, I'm lucky to squeeze through because I don't want to, you know, push them away. Um, and and the, the weird thing in a place like, like Phoenix Academy um, is that nobody's actually staring all that much at me um, since there's a wide variety. So it's like they're all in their little conversations and not getting out of the way of the hall. They're holding them right there in the middle and, and – Joe's kind of reluctant to, to push push his way through. Um, yeah, it, um, it wouldn't be cool to notice you too much, so they're not noticing you at all, which is kind of unhelpful. Like it, you know, they don't they don't want to look. They don't want to look. Don't stare. But since they're not looking, they're not noticing that you're like can't get started. Right. Um. You know, in the 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 dining hall, he's he's having to be very very cool about kind of dealing with you know plates and the, the the you know balancing you know balance actually when when he wants to balance things well carrying a bunch of stuff he's okay but the individual things as he's dealing with them he's he's awkward with because he's you know he's concerned about you know he's overthinking he it so he's overthinking it he you know he actually does snap a plate um as he's holding it in one hand and like oh i uh sorry um, sorry about that. Um, you know, gosh, uh, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll toast over there. And they're trying to tell you not to worry about it. It happens all the time. It literally happens all the time, but, uh, uh this, you know. yeah, this is a, this is a, a school full of people with super strength, you know, and, and but, teenagers. So. so it's going to happen all the time. But when he's not thinking about it and he's like, you know, God, he's plate of eggs and bacon he's got a his plate of pancakes and his his salad and he's he's setting up some toast he's actually balancing all these things really adeptly um so it's more when he's not it's more when he's thinking about it that yes as margie was saying he he overthinks it the first class 
What's the first? When is the first class of the day, and why is this going to be a problem? Uh, sink. You do not have the ferry into school. What is the first class of the day, and why is this a problem? Ah, let's see. It's like some. Who's oh. the biggest pain in the ass? Oh, there's. Oh, it's, it's like uh, uh, algebra two or something like that. It's like some math class. Oh, it's your. Uh, yeah, it's my Mr. Nemesis. Brick. It's Miss. It's Mr. Brick. Yeah, it's it's math with Mr. Brick, and that's the first class. Yeah, of course, because they schedule math. I don't know if James had to run into this the first semester in college, but every freaking advisor, when you're idiot freshman coming into college, they try to convince you that you need to take math first thing in the morning, like at seven, because you're going to retain it a lot better because it's first thing in the morning and it'll work a lot better. And what they're really trying to do is fill the fucking seven a.m. math classes because they're assholes and they lie. Um, so yeah, they put they put the math classes like first thing in the morning. So yeah, first class in the morning, Mr. Brick, um, as your you know, and the guy has absolutely no patience whatsoever for superheroic hijinks as an excuse for why you were late for class, um, as established. So okay, um, we keep getting these shots of 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 Joe like being like trying to be careful, trying to stay out of everybody's way, not to be too thing, and keeps like seeing we get keep getting shots of the clocks up on the walls and stuff like that, and seeing the clock ticking by, and like seeing him becoming more you know. Can, for, yeah, James, James backing me up here. Uh, and we see him becoming progressively more agitated as, as it's closing in on uh, the start time at like uh, 8.30, we'll say 8.30. Um, and and just not being able to get to where he needs to be and kind of looking at the map and, you know, and we get that that, that lovely comic book overview of like, the, it's just a map, but in his head, it's a map with you are here, your class is here, and there's a dotted line labeled no way to get there from here fast enough, kind of you know, mental overlay on the map. Uh, like with, you know, the, the red blinking face with the X's for eyes kind of thing, right. like I'm dead kind of thing laid over top of the whole deal. Alex, what's what's going on in your system that's got you distracted to the point where you're actually just leaving leaving your room too late uh, uh, that's delaying you as well? Somebody was wrong on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> and that's really all it takes. True. Someone was wrong. Until like the, the final alarm, like an actual reminder, like the, the half, it's like the half hour reminder before a, a thing. Um, the class is going and you like have way more than a half an hour of stuff theoretically that you would need to do to get ready. Um, so it's not like I might as well just ditch level of late, but it's it's definitely the, I need to get moving sort of now level of late. I have a uh, responsibility because I, I have to make a good first impression and be cool and be smart and, and impress everybody because that way I get to slack off later. Exactly. Um, you've just you've just established basically what it's like for me coming into a new job. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, Link, sorry, Kilm, son of a bitch. Um, I love the fact that I'm getting everybody's names. I have a name locked in for everybody. It's just the wrong one. Um, I'll start calling Mike Kim. It'll be great. Um, do, do, do. What weird thing happens in your room that delays you getting out of there in time? Um, you got all these weird artifacts and things and rocks and your stuff, your your gear. Hear me out here. Time monsters. <laughs> I'm not saying it's aliens because it's time monsters. But what if the time monsters really alien? Oh. I'm not saying the word that I'm no longer allowed to say. If they're fourth dimensional beings, they're aliens te that by technicality. So, like, sword starts glowing, shield starts glowing, rock starts humming. You step out of the room and somebody's like, you can't actually walk through the hallways armed. You have to save that for Jim. You have a locker for that. And, you know, so somebody's like complaining about the stuff that you, you got a hall monitor, like a junior hall monitor who's like in your face about carrying weapons around or something. The best boy. Yes. Yes. So that last one with the monitor, <laughs> and I try to um, kind of slide the weapons into uh, my katana space for lack of a better term um and get the get incorrect slightly and in, 
instead a uh, explosion start a uh, flame like a weird interaction thing well no a flame appears in my hand instead and the hall monitor looks unimpressed and starts chewing me out yeah he's eventually what uh yeah i'll say it's a she uh eventually what she ends up doing is like giving you like a, a pass thing but it it requires you have to take your stuff back to your room and when it's time either during advisement you can get your advisement instructor to uh teacher to give you a pass back here or you have to wait until the beginning of gym or applied skills and come back here and get the stuff and just for the purposes of taking it from there to applied skills or gym you can carry the stuff that's what this pass will do just during that period and then you have to stow it in your locker there's a locker for this stuff or you need to get a special pass for having it or you need to learn how that works she says pointing at the somewhat flaming distortion thing that you managed to i don't even want to know about that i don't even want to know about that oh my god put it back in your room you can't just poke the fire arrows with your sword or else it'll just set them off you're no fun why are you carrying a backpack full of steak what even is that um i might get hungry anyway um okay so i'm gonna get you back here met everyone in this building who all has some place to be you okay let's back this up you lived on a generation ship everyone did what they needed to do when they needed to do it or people's lives were put at stake because as a general rule space does not cooperate and you were on more to the point a generation ship that wasn't doing very well otherwise why send somebody back in time Yes, yes. To fix it, to make it not be. So doing what you need to do when you need to do it is critical. This is a place full of heroes. They should exemplify that even more. None of them are flipping, going, <laughs> lackadaisical. They're just wandering. Down. Oh my, would you just like, you're constantly caught in the slow lane of whatever hallway you're in. They're talking about stuff. They're arguing. It's like, oh, it's super shadow is really Halcyon's greatest here. Well, no, this one really, I think it was really, the, the, it was Captain Halcyon. It was, he's the greatest hero. Super shadow was effective, but really he was, he ruled, he, 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 he accomplished most of what he accomplished through fear. And, you know, uh, uh, Captain Halcyon led by, led from the front. He led with the glowing shield of righteousness. And, blah, 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 blah. and so this is what's going on everywhere they're just and it, that at least was a discussion about heroes some of them are talking about makeup some of them yeah. are talking about like their their instagram accounts and here you know hero tracker and and where their heroes are on hero tracker and some of them are like and they think based on what he said that he's actually going to come here he's going to be here for the opening ceremonies and the speech and blow you know you're going to be late and it's everyone else's fault <laughs> <laughs> and this is unacceptable. What do you do? Um, I walk on the ceiling. Now, on the one hand, this isn't really, uh, this isn't like a, a place where your your powers are really going to, I shouldn't say this, this is definitely a time when your powers can go awry. It's not a question of you being able to use your powers in this kind of environment. It's not like a combat situation. I, but I, there's, it's definitely a situation where under stress and because it's the first day of school and because you're new, things could go wrong in annoying and potentially notorious ways for you. So I'm going to have you unleash your powers, please. That will be a freak roll. And since it's the first time in this game, <laughs> since it's the first time in this game, uh, I will look at the actual text of the thing. When you unleash your powers to overcome an obstacle, in this case, the entire student body, roll freak. On a hit, you do it. On a seven to nine, well, it doesn't sound like from Dave's reaction, I need to worry about the seven to nine. So let's just see what we got. Well, no, you got you know, seven to nine. I was, I was cheering the die Being roll hit. of the game. Being a hit. All right. In that case, so let's just look at, oh, sorry. On a seven to nine, uh, you do, oh, you on a hit, you do it. On a seven to nine, you can either mark a condition or the GM will tell you how the effect is unstable or temporary. Um, for unstable or temporary, I think what's gonna, I think what unstable or temporary is gonna look like if you go with that is that you're leaving a wake of, uh, uh, basically a wake of chaos behind you. Um, you know, you're walking on the ceiling, you're fiddling with, you're fiddling, fit, fiddling with microgravity fields around people. So their stuff is flying out of their hands. It's potentially fritzing people's phones. It's messing up their hair. Um, some people are like 
going off the the floor for a, for a hot second. Maybe I don't know exactly. I mean, you you tell me what that would look like. So it's going to work for you, but there's going to be like later fallout about like you're, oh you're the you're the chaos tornado that came tearing through East Wing, you know, on the way to you know on the way to school and screwed up everybody else because you were just late for class or whatever. Uh, ultimately, uh, you do it flawlessly, but you're already stressed out by the time you get to class and you've got you've got a condition. I, you know, I think that that uh, it's. Uh, I, I think that that there there's there is going to be some some uh, consequences, let's say, to to the the passage of Met. Um, you know, something that would be sort of an ordinary thing. You know, being able to you know maneuver. Um, you know, it'd be because you don't have the same. You know, you're you're not taking into account airflows the same way. Um, you know, for all I know, there's a speeder racing through the middle of this that I didn't account for, you know, that that sort of thing. So there's definitely going to be um, probably some must hair and, and maybe a couple of, of dents in lockers. Um, and and unfortunately, one one teacher spills his coffee. Uh, on the other hand, I'm, I'm nice. learning a very important lesson, which said apparently being on time is no fucking big deal here. <laughs> <laughs> or yeah, or at least it isn't for some people, or or something. And for you, I mean, on time means you're ready to go when the bell rings, as opposed to coming in. And you know that's clearly not what that's. Um, here we got Joe late, or you're gonna have to do something about it. What's that look like? I can't be late. If I'm if I'm late, okay. late then then. I'm not sure what will happen, but I, I need to stay on the right side of the of the the teachers here. I can't be late. Okay. Um, is this more of a like use my acrobatic abilities thing, bull rush through everybody, do a Fezic everybody move kind of thing, or? or... <laughs> um. No. Um, oh come on! No, I'm just kidding. Everybody. I will test the school's yeah. auto repair facilities. I don't know. <laughs> I sure hope not. Um, I don't know. Is the school put, would this be a direct engagement? No. Um, I will actually, if I see Met doing the, the walking on the ceiling thing, um, I might try, try, try to do the, Hey, I could do kind of, you know, leaping above the crowd kind of thing, you know, off the, the, the tops of the lockers and, Stuff like well, that, and there's right? multiple that'll, buildings that'll on the campus, so some of this is also outdoors, just like getting outside. And Kaylee will tell you, trying to get through uh, Cherry Creek, that the toughest part is when you have to navigate inside the buildings. Once you're outside, it's it's open season. Super jump, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I will I will swing into action, so to speak, um, and um, try to go over. You know, think outside the box and go over people um, inside, and then once outside, um, really pour it on. Okay. Yeah, so Matt, Matt would never think about going outside. Yeah, that's really interesting, too. So, yeah, at one point in time, you see her going down, like, a pretty crowded hallway and kind of causing that chaos, and you're, like, looking at hallway, door outside, hallway, door outside, door outside. Like, um, and from there, yeah. yeah I'm not going to have you... I'm not gonna... I'm not going to quite use my bull, my bull's heart move on her, um, but, but I, I will go ahead and, and figure she's got it, she's got it together. I'm going to head outside. Where what is the or opens? What's the bull? What's the bull's well, heart? Well, when 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 I leap to defend my my love or my rival in a battle, I, I get to roll danger instead of save. Yeah, it's not quite there for that. It, it's it's not really like quite germane, but. Um, yeah. So yes, I will. Uh, yeah, if I can get outside, I can probably go faster. You know, between buildings, atop buildings, stuff like that. Okay. Sink. How are you solving this thing when you're you? Apparently, something happened and shut the. Sorry. Um, sink. The fairies are down. You're not entirely sure, or maybe you know. The player knows but what the what the alternate. Um, uh, routes to the island are options to get to the island are, or do you have some other way of solving that problem? Uh, what do you do? Well, the first th the first idea is, the, or at least the first thought that will run through Robbie's or uh, Roddy's mind on all this is, I mean, do I really have to go to school? I could be doing much more important things, and eventually, I imagine like something will drag him onto all of this. In which case, he'll be like, hmm. 
Can I give you the idea of uh, like an idea for something that might convince him? Sure. Given that he's such a, sort of a hero fanboy, uh-huh. um, you're catching a news blast like it's like a I don't know uh, like a hero watch thing on on Twitter or something like that. That apparently the reason that the ferry was delayed and shut down is that um, Voltaic, who's like this sort of electrical powered robot, used to be a hero, now he's a villain kind of thing, decided to just attack the early morning crowd of kids that were waiting for the ferry. Yeah. And like some kids came out, some of the kids in your class, you think, because uh, generally speaking, the juniors and the seniors have their own ways of getting there. So it must've been underclassmen. Like a couple of the kids like stepped up and totally shut this guy down and did like a total heroic, you know, fight the villains kind of thing and the kids are all cheering for them and there's like you know they're doing the thing and the you know but there's enough of a disruption that they just have said you know it's going to be delayed don't add to the chaos go some, get, get to school some other way and you're reminded oh yeah this school is completely flipping filled with heroes and that's freaking awesome and i need to be there um as a as a possible you know reason that to finally like go oh yeah that they, I, that's that's why you need to go there or something like uh actually, i don't know just an the, idea or the, something i was about to say the more likely one is whenever those rumors that one of those uh, uh heroes are going to show up for the uh for the uh, uh, uh oh like somebody's going to come to the opening speech yeah. thing yeah like it's that same nice. rumor that we heard in uh uh, uh mets yeah uh, going down the hallway uh-huh Ooh, Cure Alert says that uh, Captain Sparkle Pants is you know, likely to talk at our uh, our opening, uh, whatever. Yeah, I need to get the list together of the of the Halcyon's heroes so I can kind of do a little mix and match of um, some people that are there. We need to have a little quick conversation about like who do we not want to see? Like, are we done with uh, Hecate, or you know, do I do I replace her with Rainbow Princess? Or do we keep her because she's a, she's a good bad guy and who should we bring in or something like that? Who is a, like, for you, like, who who is that big hero who, go, who like, makes you decide? Um, actually, I'm going to, I'm going to cut, we're going to cut back to one more Hellbinder question. And, like, who do you look up to uh, as a hero, past or present, uh, in the, you know, as a hero, a past or present? And like you're looking at your phone, like trying to decide. It's like, oh man. And then you see the news thing. Um, and that like, was... whoever you see is like his. Your answer to him is like whoever you see pop up on this thing. Yep. And no, that was my one uh, uh, answer was uh, to my starter question. So that was Powertronic. Oh right. So pop. But that, but he was a kid though, wasn't he? No, I just he have to, like prove to, to, to prove myself to him. Oh, you have to. Okay, so he's not one of the kids. Okay, 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 okay. Um, Powertronic. So yeah, the, the the headline that pops up says, you know, Powertronic announces that he's going to be speak. You know, announces, um, you know, opening cer- o- o- you know, the appearance at opening ceremonies for this year's uh, class for uh, Phoenix Academy. And there's a shot of him like in front of the cameras. You know, pr- you know, front steps maybe of the HHL or something like that shaking hands with Hellbinder and you swear to God that Hellbinder's smiling into the camera looking right at you. Like, that's right, kid. I got him. Now you have to come. Like, that's the expression on his face. You know that that's impossible. But is it? I, I thought is it was going to be even, even more so and, and it's, you know, um, it's, it's uh, one of his kids that's attending in our class. No, I mean, this is this is definitely like Powertronic is coming, but just somehow that picture makes you think that Hellbinder, somehow he knew that I would need this extra like push, this extra lure. Because that look at his that look on his face, just look at him. That look on his face, he can something. So how do you solve this? How do you solve this problem? So this is going to be like he checks his phone, not that he really needs to for the time, and then it's just like. Huh. Turns a, you know, does like a quick about face and starts like running because he needs to get up okay. onto the second to story of this building so that as one of those kids whose parents probably have one of those quill flying cars comes by <laughs> at about this exact time every day, so he can basically just like run up there, sit down on top of it as it's 
going by and just basically catch a ride on the back of it. Everybody hates, I mean, it's like, oh my God, I hate those things. They always take up like one and a half parking spaces. What is their deal? Why does everybody like them? God, mm -hmm. they're a menace, I tell you. I heard nice. last year some kid brought one to prom. <laughs> uh, I mean, not at our school, because our school is cool, but I mean, can you imagine? Yeah, I, I love how the Q car is like the Pinto of uh... <laughs> no. Gremlin. Gremlin. The oversized Gremlin. <laughs> There's a there's a line from the most recent series of the magicians where they were like talking about like how people use magical power and it's like some people are kind of like big gas guzzlers or kind of Humvees and some people are more like me like kind of a, a, a oh god what's the what's the hybrid the uh, the Honda or the Toyota I can't remember is, some is of us are more, yeah some of us are more like a Honda Prius and kind of just sort of sip at the energy so they're like what are you like and the guy the you know the guy kind of shrugs and he's like i don't know sort of mid-size mid-efficiency and everybody in the room goes no 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 no. what's that car that explodes <laughs> <laughs> yeah anyway um okay so yep so we are trying. okay so we see you kind of um hmm, hmm, hmm. who would be i gotta now i need to know who would be coming to who would be coming to well, it wouldn't be a sophomore they wouldn't be, have their license yet Oh no! It's probably like their parents dropping him off. Oh, even better. Oh my God! I gotta, I gotta figure out who's, um, who would be bringing their kid to Phoenix Academy Is it first day in a quill. Tiffany. There's always a uh, Tiffany. Always a Tiffany. There's always a Tiffany. Uh, okay, so you drop in because these things are like open. Mm -hmm. Um, you drop in, and it takes them a second, several seconds from your timing. Um for them to turn around and whoever it is is oh you know it's somebody just absolutely mortified about it they are just gother than thou these are the kind of people who wear like a black hoodie into the swimming pool like i'll need you know uh i'll need to get more information together but these are like but their mom and dad are like june and ward cleaver <laughs> well hello surprise uh, student, and you're you're wearing the PA jacket. Welcome, come in, come. I guess you already came in, came in. What's your what's your name, kiddo? And he's like, one of, you must be one of Tiffany's little friends. <laughs> one of, and of course, uh, yes, uh, she's absolutely just gother than thou. But her name is Tiffany, oh, and no. she oh, hates no. it. So no, tell me, Mike. Uh, no, so one of my friends, uh, for one of their characters, uh, for exactly this exact kind of character, named him Gothwitch. And I feel like that's whose car Absolutely. I dropped into. Dropped into. It's Gothwitch. And but her, her real name, name, is name, is name is Tiffany. Oh my god. With an eye. With an eye. Oh god, yes. I, I mean, and her mom still spells it with a little heart. Of course. Um, of course. <laughs> You must back. be one of Tiffany's little friends. Can we drop you off? Tell us all about yourself. Actually, her full, Tiffany? Name, her full name is Tiffany full Mercedes. Name is Tiffany Mercedes. <laughs> oh my God. No. All right. Oh, what's dear. what's what's our what's our what's our surname on this one? We need something hoity and hoity. Somebody help. Tiffany. I'm Crone. Duquesne. Duquesne. Is that what you said? I like that one. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. Tiffany. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, you know, it's got, I'm going to stick with, with Tiffany Mercedes. Tiffany Mercedes Duquesne. We just couldn't decide. So we decided to give her both of our favorite names that we had settled on up to that point in time. Uh-huh. Now, so, uh, uh, so, yeah, uh, Roddy's just like, oh, you must be Mr. and Mrs. Uh, uh, Duquesne. Yeah, I'm in Tiffany's homeroom class. Nice to meet you. I just needed to ride the fairies out. She somehow manages to scrunch, like, clench her shoulders even tighter into the hoodie. Like, she's just giving off, like, a, she's, all, she's like, off-gassing, kill me now. <laughs> oh, somehow, dear. just squeezes it right out of there. Um, does that, so does we that don't mean to be that... sitting at the opposite end of the class from sink. Somebody please note that Gothwitch is in the classroom in the, in the spreadsheet. Um, put her... Got it. Oh, I think she, that means that Mike needs sit. to decide where she sits. No, yeah, no, no, you guys decide where she yeah. sits. <laughs> she's going to sit as far away from sink as she can. Oh, no, she's probably been... This is a science seating. Gothwitch, Gothwitch. 
I was about to say, put I, di- I didn't want to be in the front. So yeah, so. that's true. That's true. Put 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 her right behind him. That's so she can look like. daggers at him. God, yes. Are you kidding me? He's gonna they, have such. I, I was about to say, and, there might be coming. actual daggers involved. There's like, it's like these. I got the weird. I got the weirdest rash. There's these two like really kind of hot spots on the back of my neck. It's so it's what so random. All right, so you're catching a ride on the Quillmobile. Um, heard about a little bit of a kerfluffle there on the ferry, uh, so we just had to get little Tiff out here on our own. I, I love what James has done here by putting the the "I love you, Miles" scene, which is one of the best scenes in the movie. Yes, yes. Sean Sean never fails to just moan at the screen. Oh my God! Just let him go in. <laughs> It, it, it's sort of an worst. homage to, to you know, um, uh, Incredibles too. Sim- similar. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. Similar scene, uh, in, there. scene in there. It's so good. Yeah. Um, okay. So let me get back to the thing. Sink. Joe. Matt. Kiln. I have a thing in mind. What time is it? We're coming Eight. up on. We're coming Eight. up on the witching hour. You know, it's. This is the sad thing. Is like it really does. It's like half of a session because I'm like ready to start all the good stuff and you know we finally framed everything up and then we get to the next session. Um, but this is but important this is, because you know this is yeah this really helps us figure out who we are and stuff. We're setting like that. the. I, we're setting the table. Not, yeah, it's I'm, not time wasted. Well, and I don't feel the need as I have done in the past with a couple things is to open up with a fight because we kind of know how that. You know turns. that mechanic. So, mechanic. Yeah, and it's more interesting to just kind of get into everybody. And also, we're we're I, somebody said something today that I really really liked. They were talking about Monster Hearts, but they were talking about it in the context of masks. Where I learned it in masks, and I applied it to Monster Hearts. The the fact that the players build the world incrementally, and I like that. Just the idea that it comes together in little pieces and little steps as we go. Um, kiln. I'm gonna. Yeah, we're gonna go with Kiln here on this one because I think. Uh, uh, Alex gets us into the classroom by virtue of already being at the classroom, and I want to hear that, that what that looks like. Um, Kill chaos lies before you on the way to you. Are you reminded of your past and wandering through old ruins and stuff, and having them scattered with lesser, baser fallen creatures that have devolved and that sort of thing and armed with tusks and rough clubs and broken spears, crude bows and so forth and having no real sense of purpose other than simply to uh, uh, feed or be fed upon. It looks a lot like the hall rooms, the, the hallways of the this, of this school. Um, and again, the stronger preying on the weak because there has to have been some sort of strange chaos that has swept through this area because everyone's in disarray and people are like, you know, uh, one teacher is brushing, has gotten some sort of drink spilled all over themselves. And he posed for spring. Yeah, some some kids are uh, uh, you know sh- you know kind of you know picking up their crap or they're swearing or they're like shaking their phones and it's like why is it rebooting? It never reboots. This is, God, I hate Quill phones. Um, <laughs> and, but it's so stylish and round. <laughs> and one of them is like getting up and he's like this big kind of blonde hair down to his shoulders but swept straight back kind of. Well, this may not mean anything, kind of Bakugo character. Um, uh, maybe that actually, I think, think back for James, that might actually have some sort of impact. Um, you know who I was talking about. But, um, uh, and he's like, what'd you show me for, nerd? And like, you know, not, and he's kind of getting up in the face of some other random sort of um, uh, bottle note, you know, bottle glass kind of uh, 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 nerdy, tweedy kind of kid. Um, in the hallway, who's, who, you know, is also picking themselves up from whatever chaos is swept through here, and they're kind of getting in the way. Now, you see a way through here, and you're, you're aware enough of where you need to be that you know that you need to kind of hurry things along, but there's also kind of this bully um, in this kid's face. Uh, it's not your problem. There's a, quite a few number of kids between you and them. Uh, what do you do? Um, is this the kind of place where you step in or not? Yeah, I think I'm going to go step in kind of between the bully and and the uh, person and essentially say, like, it seems that it's almost time for class. 
Oh, nice. I like that. Hey, what are you getting? Now, this guy's bigger than you. He's clearly like in some way, shape or form, like strong. Um, it's, it's definitely what he leans into for this thing. It's like, yeah, I know what time it is, dweeb. Like, you don't need to tell me any of that kind of stuff. I know exactly what's going on. And I know this guy's going to make me late. And now you're making me late. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> I'm not making you late. You're making yourself late. Are you saying I'm lying? And he's like kind of leaning in there and like everyone around's like, either people are backing away or some people are sighing, but a, a, a fair number of people, and you gotta figure that at least half of them who got it all started are probably people that were following along with this guy in the first place, kind of go, ooh, like, yes, day one, rumble. We get to see Chet do something, or Chet, not Chet. That's a little bit too, un we'll make it a Chad. It's gotta be a Chad. No, no. He's a, Chad. He's a hunter. Oh, is he a hunter? Okay. Mm -hmm. mm, something tells me he's going to end up in our homeroom as well. Well, if his name is Chad, no. If his name is Hunter, yes. <laughs> hunter Duncan. Ooh, that's a name. Oh, right. How is the He's like an underclassman, Hunter. Waste him. Is that right? Are you some kind of underclassman talking up to people? Well, I mean, you're rather tall, so I think most people talk up to you. And everyone's like, ooh, and you're like, I was just stating a fact, like, what are you even like? And everyone's like, ooh, and Hunter does not <laughs> um, uh, like, he doesn't probably even understand necessarily speaking why, like, he's, he's just mad that people are like thinking that you scored a point, you know, kind of a deal. You talking back to me and he like grabs you by the front of your... Are you wearing like, it's still modern clothes, like you're in like casual t-shirt kind of a thing or are you wearing still like stuff that's a little bit... What does the art direction finally landed on with, with Kiln? Oh no, I'm just um, wearing miscellaneous clothes that I picked up here and there. Um, most notably, I have on a hoodie. The hoodie goes okay. excellent so he kinda, with the tunic. Yeah, he kind of grabs, he kind of, so he grabs you by the front of this thing with like one of his fists. He's a pretty strong guy. You can feel that in this thing. He's like, you talking back to me? And so kind of like, <laughs> um, you can, I mean, how do you want to approach this? Is this like kind of a back off thing? Talk him down, push him back, uh, give him the cold, cold look of death without actually touching him. Uh, what do you, like, uh, how do you want to approach this? Knock him senseless? That'll be a whole different thing. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to go for the uh, cold look of death. Okay, so I'm going to kind of give this to you one of two different ways. Well, let me, let me, let me put this, let me put this another way. Um, are you doing this? <laughs> I, saw, I sound like a theater director. What's your motivation? It, are you going at this of like, I need, like you're asserting yourself against this guy and he needs to see that he's bitten off more than he can chew kind of situation? Or is this... I don't really want to be a part of this, but I'm going to stand my ground and show him that he can't make me push me back because I am here to take care of this other, I'm, I'm here to defend this other kid. Like, what has this become at this point? Are you, is it still that, like, helping out the kid thing? Or is it more about, like, him and you, um, do you think? I'd say it's still a about uh, keeping him off of the other kid. Okay, so just, you're asserting yourself as the wall between him and this other kid and, and, and the wall's not gonna move kind of, kind of. Yeah. Which is a savior role. What do we got? Consensus at least the first time. Oh, I guess seven. Consistent mid-range hits. Love Probably nothing. Okay. Um, all right, so for the defend, you roll the seven, so that's, um, you choose, you, you're defending them, it works. Um, on, you choose from adding a team to the pool, taking influence over, over somebody you protect, or clearing a condition. Probably can influence over someone you protect is the one that makes the most yeah. sense. So we need to figure out who... Can it be, or it'd be amusing if it was uh, alternate uni uh, alternate universe plasma prints. Oh, okay. I like it. I like it. It doesn't, doesn't need to be out. We'll, 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 yeah, we'll figure out something there. Like, you know, some kind of, uh, some like nerdier, weaker, physically weaker, uh, kind of person for this guy to have been picking on. Um, and for seven and nine, 
expose yourself to danger or escalate the situation? Do you want to? Uh, I think it probably escalate the situation. Remember us. Yeah. Some well, this is going to be escalated kind of sideways a little bit um, because somebody's like you hear like this boom boom on the over thing, and somebody goes, "Hunter, I'm be late for class," and the guy kind of leans and he goes, "After school, football field. I don't know. After school, out on the track field, or everyone's going to know you're weak," which gets turned into this whole thing. Um, and then he just turns and walks away, and everyone's like patting him on the back, like, "Oh yeah." yeah kind of thing and you're left with but I mean uh, and now even less time and complications coming so that's where we're going to escalate to is escalate to some like more complicated rivalry thing with this guy rather than uh, uh, something that makes you like any more late for class than you already are um, and then the kid is like thanking you you really didn't need to do that. Thanks very much. And he's walking along and eventually you realize that you're walking along in the same direction. You're headed to the same, to the same class, which he thinks is like uh, a very, very fortuitous uh, and really kind of a bit of synchronicity, honestly, when you think about it. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Um, who, feel free to volunteer. Who's the last person to walk in a class of the five of you? Well, if no is one it, else is a taker. Is it kill? Oh, sink. I was through the door before the bell rang, though. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. The the you would have to measure this with a micrometer, but you were you were you were your butt was in the seat before the bell went off. Um, only you and the st and and uh, the security camera footage would be able to prove it. But um, <laughs> true. He, he's in the door before the as the bell starts. He's in his butt in seat before the bell stops. And only had to go over three desks to get there. Um, weirdly, Gothwitch beat you. You think she just kind of materialized in the desk? <laughs> Which is okay because because obviously he had to leap over her head. It was a cloud of it was a cloud of mist that can, that that's basically consolidated into a cloud of resentment. Uh, Joe or Matt, who gets in? Who who can, who gets in first of the two of you? Joe will if Joe gets to the door before she does. He will run interference to let her get. Nice. I like that. I like that <laughs> because he feels a little guilty about cheating by going outside. I don't know. I don't know. Um, who thinks they're the first person then, but is actually um, greeted by um, uh, Alex already sitting in their seat? Like, who does that leave? Kiln. Kiln, which probably wouldn't happen. Honestly, Kiln's probably coming in about the same. Uh, no, because the chaos thing. Kiln's probably pretty close to the end. Then it's you two. Um, Alex, you come in. Actually, tell me about this then. So you come in, and Brick is already like writing out assignment stuff on the on the blackboard longhand he's not using the smart board he's got he's rolled in a blackboard um like a freestanding thing and he's writing on that uh who is already in the classroom uh, of the pcs or anybody of anybody of anybody um i want to put somebody in 1a um oh nice yes yes i want to say that they are um very big and wearing uh, flannel suspenders and glasses. Okay. Um, that is Roy. Roy. Go ahead and put that in there. We'll figure out whoever, what Roy is. Is he, is he the kind of guy who's um, like big smiles, like super confident, big smiles, but like everybody else, you know, has absolute confidence in everybody else as well kind of thing? Or is it something else? What's his, what's his vibe? Give me a like, vibe. Like, like imagine he's, he's, he's the Hulk with Bruce Banner's personality, but he's a lumberjack. <laughs> Oh my God! And, and and you know his his un, un, unfortunate oh. uh, hero name is Sasquatch. Is he part Sasquatch though? That's a personal question. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. Sasquatch uh, is more of a condition than a, than a than a familial trait. So you <laughs> can still have a code name. I feel like there has to be some sort of terrible pun of lumberjack that we can like the backwoodsman or something like the that. The mighty larch. I like that actually. Which one? Which one? The mighty larch or or the backwoodsman? I was gonna say. I, I like the mighty larch. 
That's, I mean, you don't I feel have like to he's go. a Monty Python fan. I feel like Sequoia gives him a little more dignity, but that's just. Ooh, that is true. I like that. Paul Bunyan. That, I like that. I like, no, I like Sequoia. That's pretty good. That just sounds that's, cool. Is, isn't that like, you know, um, cultural infringement? Unless he's actually Native American. I mean, it's, it's not. It's, yeah, it could be. It's flannel and the thing, and I kind of like that. I think we, I mean, I, I think it's the name of a tree, and you could probably get away with it not being cultural infringement. But in case, let's make him regional from the area, and, from that area, and, and uh, you know, First, First Nation. People. So, yeah, which lends something to possibly uh, a more, uh, uh, Oh, like an indigenous surname, but we'll figure that out. I like it. I like it a lot. Roy's already there. So he's not like a, he may not, is he, is he a big smiler or is he just like a solemn nod kind of thing as you're coming in? Uh, I'm going to say big smiler. What's, what's Alex's last name? Uh, Shelby. Miss Shelby, thank you for being prompt. In fact, being early, uh, there's absolutely no points for it, but there will be for the first test. I encourage you to uh, sit down and review the upcoming material. I'm with Sync. This guy is definitely a supervillain. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. There's no other explanation for giving a test on the first day. Exactly. I didn't necessarily say there was going to be a test on the first day. It's a uh, it's a knowledge assessment to help them calibrate is what everyone's uh, uh, ability levels already are. I mean, skills that atrophy over the summer. And this is essentially what he's saying during the first uh, ten minutes as the playing. Thank you all for being uh, at least. Technically on time, I am Mr. Rick. Some of you may have heard another name, that's fine. Uh, we will be doing a quick assessment at the end of class. I will be doing a bit of a refresher during the middle of class. The assessment will be to freshen everybody up on the material that we will be covering this year, to remind you what you may have forgotten from the year before, and to tell me how much you have actually forgotten. Uh, the class will be, we are going to move very fast. You will be expected to keep up. You will not be expected to bring in excuses having to do with giant robots, giant lizards, giant women, giant men, giant cars, giant anything, or even very small microscopic things. Transportation to other dimensions, transportation to other countries. Uh, all of that might happen. I don't care. Your homework is still due. It's still due when it's due. You will not be given the opportunity to retake any tests. You will not be able to take tests that you miss. You will not be able to review the material unless you can find someone in the class who wants to take the material with you. If you have any questions about this, um, well, just play back what I just said to you because the answers are not going to change. Now, let's review what we went over last year with chapter one. And welcome to your first day at class. Welcome to Phoenix Academy. And we'll just go in with that stuff there. And that's where things get started. So, there we go. Mr. Brick, supervillain. That, that's totally a supervillain uh, uh, intro right there. Honestly, I mean, you will notice, and I, I uh, please please do note that I did change, I found, um, <laughs> in I use Mr. Brick, because obviously I'm already running a thing that's in a Phoenix Academy. And I needed pictures. And one of the questions that you guys didn't answer that the other class did is, who do you have a crush on? And the space girl, like sort of the outsider, decided that she had a crush on Mr. Brick. So they went and found a picture for Mr. Brick, who was still teacher age, but somebody you would actually have a crush on, uh, which is what I showed you guys last week. I found a better picture for Mr. Brick that I'm very, very happy with. Um, so we'll be using our new and improved version of Mr. Brick uh, for our class because the picture's awesome. Um, and again, kind of leans into the pretty much has to be a supervillain kind of expression on his face. Where is you know. this picture? Okay, so if you look at, I gotta get to the thing. It's in... Oh yeah, it's, uh, yeah you posted in the, the Phoenix Cat Teachers thread, I think. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> yes. And I will cross post it to the uh, Discord. I need a link because my, yeah, please, please do because my, oh, there he is. Yeah. That's a super villain. It's not a, he could be a very, he, possibly a very nice man. He's just going to make sure that you guys all no know your nice, math. No nice person gives a test on the first day of class. Like, a uh, nice person to, like, 
birds or small dogs? Like, not humans, obviously. I, um, actually, dogs. here's the thing is, I didn't actually mean with what I said to Alex that there was going to be a test at the end of class, but when you guys understood that that's what I had said, I, I mean, why wouldn't I lean into that? So, um... Yeah, I saw that coming. Yeah, I mean, got me monologuing. All right. Um, all right, so that's where we begin with that. Um, having introduced, we have a, a, a few sketches in. I need to make sure that I figured out what uh, who, who Kiln's nerdy friend is. Um, we have Gothwitch. Thank you. We have Roy. I'm excited. Mm-hmm. I'm going to start asking some questions. Um, maybe we'll do that over the... Uh, thank you for putting that into the chart there. Um, yes. we'll, we'll ask some questions as we're... <laughs> um, Maybe over the course of the week here, I'll start bouncing some questions around. And say, you know, you know, Joe, tell me about this thing, a specific thing about problem child, and I'll ask you some specific questions or whatever, and we'll kind of go from there. Um, I need to get a good list together. I, I feel like at some point in time, I put together a prep list for this kind of stuff that was a little bit more. There's some ones that they suggest in in um, Monster Hearts, which is where I borrowed this from, but uh, a lot of those are very Monster Heartsy, and uh, I came up with some maths. Well, I just need to figure out where the heck they're at and all that kind of stuff. And apparently, I'm going to be packed tomorrow so I probably won't get through it too soon. Take it to the top for me. 